Your liver can repair itself. Let's get into it. That's right, if your liver gets damaged from alcohol, for example, it can, at least to a certain extent, regenerate. So this is pretty remarkable because, let's face it, the human body is not exactly known for its ability to regenerate body parts, right? Like, if we get an arm cut off, we can't simply grow another arm like a lizard and its tail. You know, lizards can lose their tail and they can sort of grow like a little stubby one back. Yeah, humans can't do that, but we can regenerate and repair some of our organs. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, you've been drinking alcohol. And not just a little alcohol here and there, I'm talking a lot of alcohol, like a six pack a day, um, every day for quite some time, several months maybe. What is likely to happen, in fact, it's almost a sure thing, studies show that 90% of heavy alcohol drinkers develop this, uh, the liver will become uh, fatty. You'll get fatty liver. We call this hepatic steatosis. This is where the liver gets uh, fat deposits, so much so that it actually changes the way the liver looks. Uh, it will get kind of a yellowish tint. It looks almost greasy on autopsy. And we can actually see this on CT scan too. The liver will look enlarged and it'll be darker in color compared to a healthy liver. And so thankfully at this stage, the liver still maintains its function. And actually most people with fatty liver, they don't even notice it. You oftentimes don't have any symptoms. Sometimes you can feel a bit of a fullness or some discomfort in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, uh, partially because the liver is becoming enlarged. Uh, some people do endorse kind of a vague fatigue, but for the most part, it's asymptomatic. Anyway, at this stage, um, what happens is if you continue to drink heavily, eventually you'll move from um, hepatic steatosis or fatty liver to fibrosis. And then in some people, they even move over to cirrhosis. And this can become end-stage liver disease where the liver no longer functions properly and you get all kinds of complications. You start bleeding more. Uh, you can have even life-threatening bleeds, particularly from the esophagus. Also, the liver doesn't make proteins normally. Um, you can get fluid building up in the abdomen. It's a mess. And at this stage, the liver can take down other organs with it. You can get kidney failure. Uh, it's really bad. Sometimes you even need a liver transplant. But uh, let's not go there just yet. Let's go back to fatty liver hepatic steatosis. Now, let's say instead of continuing to drink alcohol, you cut out alcohol entirely. What happens is over the next uh, couple months, the liver will actually repair itself to the point where fatty liver, so to speak, actually resolves. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that this doesn't happen overnight. You know, this is not just abstaining from alcohol for a weekend. Uh, it takes time. Uh, typically, uh, at least six weeks of no alcohol whatsoever. So when you hear about people doing things like sober November or maybe it's New Year's, they have partied a little too much for New Year's Eve and then they feel bad about it. So then they go all of January without drinking. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good start one month. But um, better yet would be at least six weeks and even better yet is even longer. This will, really will allow the liver enough time to um, to regenerate, to repair the damage that was done uh, from long-term heavy alcohol use. And the liver's ability to repair itself isn't limited to just alcohol-related liver disease. Liver damage from other causes can also be repaired in the same way. For example, if you look at non-alcohol-related risk factors for liver disease, these are things like obesity, diabetes, sedentary lifestyle, uh, if you uh, repair these things or fix these things, you can also allow your liver to regenerate. So get diabetes under control, take medications, change your diet, get those blood sugars under control, also weight loss. All this can help uh, to give the liver a chance to regenerate. Now, here's the, here's the thing. In both alcohol-related liver disease and these non-alcohol-related liver dysfunction, there does come a point of no return. So really what I'm talking about in this video, it just applies to hepatic steatosis or fatty liver, kind of the first stages of chronic damage to the liver. Once we start getting into a fibrosis where you get scarring in the liver, uh, that cannot repair itself, that is permanent. That's why treating liver disease is so hard because uh, once you get to that stage, there really aren't a whole lot of treatment. There's medications we can give to try to fight back on the symptoms, like when toxins build up, when the liver is no longer able to 
um, take care of ammonia levels in the body. We can give lactulose, a laxative to help the body get rid of ammonia another way. But all this is really just putting a Band-Aid on the underlying issue. And once you get fibrosis or scarring in the liver, you can't really correct the underlying problem. Ultimately, people need liver transplants. And as you might imagine, number one, that's a massive surgery. And number two, uh, livers are hard to come by. It's, and to make matters worse, people with liver disease who are still drinking alcohol actually usually don't qualify for liver transplant. The idea is that liver transplants are such a hot commodity, they're in such short, short supply, we don't want to give that to someone who's still actively drinking and might damage the new liver too. So long story short, you don't want to end up with advanced liver disease and in a situation where you're dependent on a liver transplant. Okay, there you go. That's a quick video on the liver's remarkable ability to regenerate and repair itself, at least at the stage of fatty liver. And this is really good news because uh, people who are heavy drinkers, uh, studies do show, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, that 90% of them will develop hepatic steatosis. And actually, if you look at the general population, people who aren't drinking heavily, it's about 30%. So this is by no means a rare disease. In fact, if you walk down the street, chances are you're going to pass a couple of people who do have fatty liver. And with lifestyle changes, cutting out the alcohol, improving diet, uh, getting um, chronic comorbidities like obesity or diabetes under control, uh, you can really make a big difference and allow the liver to heal itself. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like medical related content like this, feel free to hit the subscribe button there or check out another video right here. And I'll see you guys next time.